Okay, let's talk about mesh deformation, an essential topic in digital geometry processing. Uh, so this is all about finding new vertex coordinates for a, a meaningful plausible motion, such as the ones here, either in 2D or 3D. Uh, and there is interestingly a complex math hidden behind a very simple intuitive user interface. And we will talk about that math today in detail. Uh, so motivation is we will get new shapes basically by editing or reposing the existing ones. Uh, <clears throat> so that is the main motivation. We will see all the deformation types later. Uh, so let's begin with uh, a very basic idea which uh, sucks basically. Just move one point that is being dragged and leave the others alone. It is not intuitive at all. Uh, so what we want is when we move this point the neighborhood should move accordingly. Like this displacement should be propagated to the other vertices around. Uh, and uh, there are ways to achieve that. Uh, basically so this displacement should be applied heavily to the close vertices and lightly to the uh, far away vertices. Then basically, so the way to decrease this uh, displacement is an issue of choice. Uh, you can simply use Euclidean distances, uh, which is fast but not that accurate because like just for in this example, when I move this yellow neighbor, the yellow vertex, Euclidean distance to this uh, region, the green region, is very close, so they will be affected, but I really don't want that part to be affected. So, geodesic distance is a better alternative, like, because the yellow is not close to this green part in terms of geodesics, but it is uh, costly compared to the simple Euclidean distance. Minimum number of edges connecting the seeds to the, the vertex, uh, connecting seat to the vertex of this place is another choice, but again this is basically the geodesic distance idea. So let's stick with that, assume that we have lots of time. Um, then what is happening here is I am going to use this uh, attenuation function, the freezing function. Uh, so I is the uh, number of edges, uh, yes, uh, from this point to the uh, query point uh, for which I need to estimate the displacement and n is the maximum uh, range that I will go that my displacement will affect. So when i is 0 basically this is 1, right? 0 over something is 0. So I will have full effect, the full displacement from the user mouse dragging will be applied to this vertex. But when I is 1, I will have, I will be losing some of my power, like these guys will be affected. And when I is 2, I will be using even more power. So these guys are affected, but not that, not that uh, hard. So, but uh, this is one way to propagate the formation. It is a very simple way. We will see better and more accurate versions later. Uh, the formation type. So, here, user decides somewhere as the fixed region that will never be updated. That those uh, vertices are frozen, and R is the the formation region unconstrained. Basically, user will go wild with this uh, region and the H uh, is the uh, sorry this is the H handle region user will go wild on this region and there is this unconstrained deformation region R that should deform intuitively so that propagation should handle the blue parts automatically so let's take a little pause here uh, normally deformations involve only one model. I use some uh, mouse dragging, etc., some uh, metaphors to 
edit that shape but sometimes I have two shapes so I don't do any mouse dragging at all and completing the in-betweens so this is basically another type of deformation if you look at it uh, so here the idea is uh, find correspondences between two uh, source and target shapes and put some primitives like lines or nonlinear curves between the corresponding points and move on this parametrization the same uh, for all the primitives like move 0.5 on all the red lines here they will give you the middle dog here it is okay very simple idea it can work uh, if your source and target is uh, are compatible enough but if they are not and usually they are not then we will be losing information like the loss of hand volume here if you look carefully and the reason is obvious uh, the shape space is not linear and i am trying to do a linear interpolation so basically this is the shape space and when you do linear interpolation you don't hit this red point in the middle you hit a red point that is slightly below it which leads to that artifacts those artifacts so this is just a quick note about the formation between two shapes obviously there are nice non-linear algorithms or data-driven algorithms you need to focus but this is not the heart of today's topic yes yeah, so let's do the formation type shell based basically only the shell not the interior these are the polygon meshes that we are familiar with uh, and this will be the topic of today mainly volume based you also have interior stuff like that mesh that red roll mesh and as little as possible algorithm that I will advertise today will also apply here so we will kind of handle this part as well another paradigm is multi-scale deformation where you have some operators like uh, this is your input I want to deform it first decompose it into uh, the base part and the high frequency geometric details deform the base model and then add the geometric details on this deformed model one way to go FFD very popular freeform deformation you need an external thing now in, in addition to our input model horse the blue one we need to put a lattice or cage around it and so this is the cages or lattices this is lattice this is cage they are very easy to handle they are low resolution and the thing you need to do is to dis um, transfer that displacement on the lattice to the uh, shell or to the mesh vertices so let me go a little uh, in the FFT business this is the idea as you can see they form the ambient outer space and thus implicitly form the embedded objects in it for each vertex of the objects uh, we have this local grid coordinates and they will be used so let, let me go over an example to make things uh, clear so this is my shape okay like a ship like shape the black one dark black one bolt black one whatever uh, and I have this grid around it, which is a 3, 6, 8 by 3 grid. So, uh, if you focus on this point A, so let's again get our pen, so uh, life. So, let's talk about this point A, okay? This point A uh, has a local coordinate of 5.6 2.7 so look at these reference values basically uh, I have three Q, three squares 0 to 3 so one unit okay these are unit squares and within that this is 0 0 and this is 1 1 so I will go 0 0.6 to right and 0 0.7 to up so it will be my local coordinates of a within that grid cell within that square okay uh, so I how will I use that so uh, the user deforms the grid only so that grid will be a grid like this 
then I need to transfer the displacement to this A point uh, so to end up with this uh, output value how do I do that? so let's focus on one uh, cell, a square rectangle cell we will do bilinear interpolation, a very important concept so I have these four coordinates P0, 0, P0, 1, P1, 1, etc I know u and v values, so I will go. So let's see the general math first. Uh, this uh, will be u will parameterize the horizontal moment and v will parameterize the vertical moment. So this is going to be u, this is going to be 1 minus u. Uh, similarly, this will be u, this will be 1 minus u. So for this point, PU1, so I am doing this line, okay, uh, it will be the way weighted by U for P11, so take U amount of P11 and 1 minus U amount of P01, so the opposite uh, interactions. It makes sense because when U is 1, you will get everything from P11, okay, and when U is 0, you will get everything from P01. So with that in mind, I can complete P01. With the same logic, I can complete P00. So I am done with the horizontal moment. Now that I have this P1, U1, and PU0 with linear interpolation, I will do a second linear interpolation over this line from PU0 to PU1 using the vertical uh, coordinate V, local coordinate. So basically, again, if you say uh, v here, and this would be 1 minus v, because again, remember the extreme logic, when v is 1, I will get everything from pu1. So v will hit pu1, as I see here, and 1 minus v with v P will hit pu0, which is in the bottom. Uh, yeah, so if you open these uh, equations here we end up with this closed formula so I just show you the derivation of this now let's go back to our problem I have u 0.6 v 0.7 just plug it here okay so this formula so I can compute my p the new p coordinates which is this um, based on the four cell coordinates p 0 0 p 0, 1, etc. Yeah, that's the idea. Now let's generalize this a little bit. I don't have to use rectangle cells. I can use triangle cells. Then the, this bilinear, bilinear interpolation will be replaced by this barycentric coordinate idea. Because any point within a triangle cell, P, can be represented by this weighted equation A alpha times this coordinate a beta times this coordinate b and gamma times this coordinate c so let's be more rigorous alpha is basically area of this opposite triangle this triangle over the whole area similarly beta is this area over the whole area and gamma is 1 minus alpha and beta sum because they all need to add to 1 if the point is in interior which it is uh, so basically this is the way to derive average again let's do the uh, extreme logic so when beta is 1 and all others are 0 so this p will so let me draw it this triangle here again so this point, when I drag it here, I get all the power from the B point because beta is 1. And it makes sense because this point is literally on B. Then this this area over the whole area will be 1. Okay, so if we move any of the triangles, vertices, or if we apply any transformation to triangles, so same thing, we can use barycentric coordinates of any point on the original triangle to compute their corresponding position on the new triangle. So just like I 
compute the new position of P within the rectangle, I can compute it within the triangle. Let's do it even more general. Uh, like replace poly uh, triangle with the convex polygon, then you need to use uh, some coordinates due to this guy inventor web press. But this should be a convex polygon, so kind of restricted. We can do even better, like arbitrary polygon cells is welcome, are welcome. And then we have this something called mean value coordinates. Uh, so same logic to represent this interior point given the polygon points vi, vi plus one and vi minus one. I will get contributions, so lambda i contribution from each polygon vertex, just like alpha contribution from A, beta contribution from B. So in particular, this alpha, uh, sorry, lambda contribution from this vertex vi for this v would be given by this equation based on tangents and trigonometry, but it is the idea. So we have this nice tool in our hands as well. And I can also extend it from 2D polygons to 3D polyhedron. So the, the guys embedded in 3D and this is where I really do 3D deformation like this one and this one. So 3D mean value coordinates are useful here. But in general, like you can also use cubes with, without this mean value coordinate business because with a cube you can do trillion interpolation. But here, for instance, we have nine cubes, I guess. So it is good to have this tool in our hands, mean value coordinates. And I can recommend you nice readings on this uh, interpolation business. Uh, yeah. So let me uh, give you my own insights. Uh, so I have already talked about bilinear interpolation. Basically, this interpolation over a 2D plane just like the one we did before. Trilinear will be an interpolation over a 3D vol volume where I need to find the value or position at find the value f at a point in 3D. So this function can be anything. It can be a coordinate function or a color function or intensity function etc. And in 1D it will be the search on a 1D line. So let's start with 1D. Then I have linear interpolation work. Basically, I want to interpolate, like fill the in betweens from on a line from V0 to V1. Like how do I fill this point x, y? Basically, start from V0 uh, and go in this direction. But the way we rewrite this equation is I parameterize it over parameter u or t let's go with t here so t and this would be 1 minus t weighted so for this point t the opposite guys will be partnered up t v1 times 1 minus t v0 so when t is 1 I am literally at v1 and you can apply the same logic, you know, I just replaced T with U for some reason because I pasted this from another source, it doesn't matter. You can, just like you do point calculation, position calculation, you can do other scalar point calculations. Let's go to bilinear, we have done this uh, here, I talked about this. So first do linear interpolation on the horizontal part get the R1 and R2, then do the second interpolation using the second parameter V from R1 to R2. And if you do it where you interpolate the values defined on four points only, so I have red color here, green color here, dark red color here, blue color here, then when you do bilinear interpolation you can color colorize all the 2D points on this plane. And geometric interpolation is the following. For this point to get colored, you will get this value, this color value, weighted by this opposite area. So, in other words, 
closer this query point to this point this yellow array will be larger so the contribution from this uh, function will be higher again this can be also a coordinate then this coordinate will dominate so yeah, that's a good idea tree linear is again a simple extension we will do lerps a lerp of two by lerp so what time mean by this okay so now you have a cubic cell uh, I have this bottom face and this top face okay this is the bilinear interpolation problem here I can solve it with this tactic I can also solve it for the top face and then I end up with these green points and then do a linear interpolation from here to here and the geometric interpolation is again now just like the extension of this array idea to the volumes okay without cell so let me also mention this because it's related it's called uh, without cell I can still do interpolation uh -huh. and so in this case it's called scattered data interpolation it dates back to 86 basically uh, you have some function values it, there is no grid at all uh, so there is no neighborhood but we will use this inverse distance weighting so what I mean by this F to compute the uh, color or function at value x uh, I will use the uh, color uh, that is defined on this uh, scatter point scatter point at, uh, xi is the scatter point and fi is the function value at that point so now i x is my query point so i have my distance to that xi okay so this is going to do, be the weight of the fi from xi okay so the distance but notice the minus it is very important it is inverse distance so the longer the distance the smaller the numerator Hence, the smaller the uh, effect of uh, fi, and this is just the sum of uh, everything that is in denominator for normalization. But uh, it is the idea. So I hope you get the logic. And when you keep p1, it is kind of easier to understand. But as you increase p, you get uh, this effect. Let's do another action uh, it is a variant of freeform deformation because uh, we still have a cage but in this time the cage will be inside basically there will be a skeleton it will be controlling the surface deformation just like the cage controlled the surface deformation before uh, so it is uh, basically you need to bind the skeleton vertices to the source vertices and it is very easy to manipulate skeleton basic this sum because it's very discrete very uh, rough uh, some rotations to be applied to this rigid bones and then those movements will be transferred to the skin it's called skinning that's why it's also known as linear blend skinning or skeletal subspace deformation the first thing is to bind the skin versus to bones so here we do it inside you don't see the skeleton but anyway uh, so let's let me draw the skeleton of this part only so the points here are attached to this bone so basically this is our finger right we have one joint second and third so maybe it is drawn better here first joint second and third so the black ones are attached to more than one bone so it makes sense it is in the joint so the vertex here will be affected by this bone as well as this bone but the vertex here will be affected by only this bone so it will move rigidly as this skeleton bone moves and how do I do it basically enough with the intuition uh, so this is the idea P ij prime is the vertex i transformed using bone j okay to the surface vertex 
I transform those into bond Lee. So how do I transform it? TJ, I need a TJ. It is the current transformation of bond J. Basically, this is happening. Current transformation of bond J will be applied uh, to the height point. Mm. And I end up with the, the vertex I transform using uh, bond J. And to get the final result, I need to get the contributions from all the bonds, okay? So for a bond that is very far away from the surface point PI, um, this weight will be zero. So I don't really care about that uh, displacement. But for a bond that is really in touch with my uh, surface point, this weight will be high and it will affect the movement of the surface point PI. That is the idea. Let's do shell based as we proceed. Uh, so I will <coughs> show you Laplace in the formation framework first. It will be a very important thing to understand and then I will make it even more better. So control mechanism handles, like in this case handles around the fingers, they are moved and the region of interest, which is in this case like the arm, should move accordingly. Without that, it will suck basically. It is not a deformation if you only move the handle vertex. So, to do the propagation, it is not okay to do it on the absolute coordinates because uh, doing the operation that preserve overall shape is difficult on point by point basis. I don't want to uh, deal with all the points explicitly. Rather, I will do this trick differential coordinates or delta coordinates. It's basically for a given point, red point, its differential coordinate is the following it's a vector from the weighted average of its warning neighborhood, which is the red the orange point, it's a vector from the center of the neighbors to the point itself. So let me re repeat it. The delta differential coordinate is a vector from or from the center of the query point to the query point. And it basically encaps and approximates nice uh, information local shape information. What is that? It is about mean curvature because if this uh, red point is on the same plane as the neighbors then there will be zero mean and this orange vector will be zero. right? So the mean curvature is involved as well as the normal direction at V because this is basically a direction that mimics the normal direction. So I have nice local shape information around V. So the way to compute this is uh, get some contribution from so this is VJ it runs from 1 to 6 in this case 1 to 3 maybe 4 5 6 4 is invisible uh, so okay weighted contributions over the sum of all weights so let, let's start with the easy case weights are all one okay uniform rating in that case what this boils down to is uh, these are all one so I have sum of all the neighbors and this will be the degree number of neighbors because sum of ones and many times where n is the number of neighbors so I have a vector from the center of the neighbors to the vi it is called the differential coordinate delta i I can rewrite this equation by doing what? By moving vi inside of this thing. Uh, basically, I then end up with uh, this scenario. Okay, and visually, what I have is I have vectors from vk to vi, one vector, second vector etc. like this and average of all these red vectors will give me the 
the delta vector, the, delta, the desired coordinate, differential coordinate. I can do better than uniform weighting, as we discussed in the parameterization class. Uh, basically, the problem with uh, uniform weighting is uh, you will get, so here the core point is here, so you will get the same contribution from all the vertices around. But this is not what it's supposed to be. So if this point is like here, for instance, okay, then this point should get more contribution in the sum because it is closer to the query point. So to get that in our system, I will use this formula, cotangent land weighting. Basically, it is about it's about giving high higher weights to the closer vertices when I'm computing WIK for the gate neighbor okay uh, uh, the cotangent of the opposite angles will be in business and basically they will be uh, summing up they will be computing uh, some of these red lines over the edge length okay and I can compactly write it like this so why is this important? Uh, if I do the deformation, as I will do later, I end up with these artifacts, these artifacts with the uniform weighting and a better one with cotangent weighting. But I would like to illustrate this with some slides borrowed my borrowed from my mesh parameterization lecture uh, because it does a better job in my opinion. So you don't have to know parameterization at all. To understand this didactic example, basic parameterization is about uh, moving, uh, mapping this 3D mesh to 2D. Okay, so let's take this pyramid mesh. Okay, and with uniform weighting. So notice one thing: this pole is not exactly in the center; it is slightly shifted. Okay, so when I parameterize it with uniform weighting uh, so this point okay it will come exactly to the center of its neighbors so one two three four neighbors and exactly the center which is not what I want because in the original shape it is closer to these two points two neighbors than to these two neighbors. So if I do it with cotangent weight, see it's parameterized, it maps to 2D with in this configuration, not exactly in the middle. So why is it okay, useful then? If I map this 2D texture, okay, so I have this 2D texture, if I map it uh, to my 3D shape, this 3D shape, with this configuration, and now I will. I am looking at the 3D, okay, from the bird eye. So I am doing bird eye view. So this is the 3D guy. I am looking at this shape from top, okay. So see what is happening. The grid lines here, they are preserved. They are like orthogonal still. Especially if you compare it with the uniform uh, result. Then the grid lines are terrible, like distorted, right? Because you didn't respect this geometry. So this is, in my opinion, showing the difference between uniform and cotangent weight uh, nicely. And uh, yeah, so that uh, so these grid lines are distorted with uniform weighting. So that distortion comes to picture in this form for deformation another uh, application yeah so now let's uh, do the differential coordinates remember and remember what uh, <clears throat> I want to compute this okay so differential coordinates so I will stick with stick to this thing differential coordinate delta i for vi is vi minus 1 over d degree of vi 
plus the sum of the neighbors. So let's do it. Uh, in general, it is the sum of I will use WIs, the cotangent ways, but let's stick with the uniform weighting. Always R1 for easy understanding. Then what this comes to is minus one, so it is one over sum of all ones degree i. Okay, so it is going to be. So I will build my Laplacian matrix. This is a very important matrix. Uh, like this, I will put ones to the diagonals, and if there is a neighbor, if i and j are neighbor, then for the entry i j in this matrix, I will put minus one over degree v i. Okay, so why? Because I want to implement this function. So let's see if this really implements it. So in this case, uh, this is the delta points that I want to compute, okay? So this Laplacian matrix, when hit with the uh, matrix of all the vertices, so every row is one vertex, I have n rows because I have n vertices and I am in 3D. So what this diagonal does is 1, so take V1, okay, because I'm computing delta 1, and then I will subtract average of the neighborhood points. So to get that, uh, I will get sum of V2 because V2 is neighbor to V1, V4 is neighbor to V1, so I will get sum of V4, notice that this is the fourth entry, it will hit V4, and I will get sum of V5, this is the fifth entry, it will hit the fifth row here to get V5. And the first column is about x coordinates. So I will get the x coordinate of my delta and I will do it for all other coordinates as well. So I hope that it is clear that this N matrix computed with the x tactic uh, gives you the delta coordinates when applied to the vertex. Uh, matrix uh, and some implementation details here. Uh, this Laplace matrix is very sparse, extremely sparse because remember the degree here, non zero elements are like six or something because we are dealing with a mesh. Do I have a mesh around? Uh, yeah, so take any point like this point, it, the number of neighbors of this. Is like this really right so I have five or six points so this point is definitely not the neighbor of this point so what I mean is only six about six points of this matrix of this row will be non-zero and all of the other one million points if n is one million which is a normal case in a regular mesh or let's say one thousand still sparse they will all be zero. That's why it is sparse. You need to keep it sparse. I recommend Eigen library for that and for also for the further activities like solving the sparse linear system. Again, Eigen library provides it. So it's a cool linear algebra, linear algebra library in C. I use it all the time. I recommend it. Now, but let's go further. Can I recover absolute coordinates from the differential coordinates? No, but why no? Uh, because this, I have this equation, right? So if I know the differential coordinates, then I can do this L minus L inverse. I can multiply both sides with L inverse. So this becomes identity, and so this will be the V. But it turns out that I can because L is singular, I cannot take its inverse. Why? Because this differential coordinates, they work uh, for any point. So, what I mean is, so if this is your differential coordinate, it is in this location, it is still going to be your differential coordinate, right? Same. So, you can translate it to anywhere in the space. So translation offset is lost actually in the L itself. There is no such geometric information. So I need to 
and get that information and to do that we simply add one row to the bottom of L that has a one that has a one at the index of the fixed vertex so uh, if this vertex uh, has ID 67 then I will fix it okay to 0.555 for instance then this one will be at the 67th column and the corresponding boundary condition will be 555 that is the idea so actually it will be 359 in this example apparently uh, and in this example I am fixing let's read v6 not v67 but a close call uh, so what I do is I keep the original L matrix here which is uh, 6 by 6 and in the 7th seventh, seventh row uh, I put a 1 to the 6th column because V6 is fixed uh, and the corresponding boundary condition will go into the delta matrix which is fine it is 359 and 3D word coordinate so what it does is basically uh, it will fix the last coordinate to this point and now I can do the recovery and in general you don't have to fix only one vertex in general you fix M vertices then you have M guys M rows after the L matrix you still have this X unknowns and you still have your delta and followed by M rows of m constraint points in this case m is one only one constraint point which is 359 but you get the uh, logic right so this l let i let's call this l tilde okay oops l tilde so this matrix it is not square anymore <clears throat> so inversion is a little tricky what i do is uh, i take the transpose of this so this is nr n plus m times n size of this matrix is that if you take the transpose of it it will be what n times n plus n and uh, bear with me n plus n so if you multiply transpose with the original then you end up with the square matrix because this is going to be multiplied by this in terms of size so I will end up with an n by n matrix wonderful uh, so it can be now inverted <coughs> uh, and then I will also know this and I can uh, apply it to B now basically let me remind you what I did what I did was this LX is equal to B but the problem is L is not immediately invertible because it's not square so I will multiply here with L transpose and basically all the L's that I say they should have been L tilde so now this is square and since I multiply here by this I need to multiply here by the same term here which is L tilde transpose and then I come to this line I leave this part alone I take the multiply the left hand side with inverse of this which is this so I also mult uh, multiply the right hand side with that so I already have them on the right hand side and that is the logic uh, and if you so this is an optical solution to this system if you don't like it you can also the least squares uh, minimization I will get into this later um, so this is kind of a surface reconstruction problem right uh, reconstruct the surface from a given operator Laplacian operator um, but uh, I can also cast this as a deformation problem <coughs> because I have this operator Laplacian matrix uh, encoding the 
connectivity of this host model, for instance, and then uh, I will uh, use uh, some control points like the formation handles. I will move this point. So this is vertex 105. I move vertex 105 here. Then to reconstruct that thing means deform that thing from this pose to this pose. So basically, let's, this is the idea. So basically, I will do the formation with that logic. So here, this is a slide copy pasted from this paper that I recommend. Least squares meshes. I have this original horse model with twenty thousand vertices. Okay, so this is the zoom to some region. This is original connectivity. I can encode this connectivity using the Laplacian matrix L by by this tactic, right? So just like I encode this connectivity with this matrix here, I can do it for that connectivity. Then this square mesh of the horse. So what they do in this paper is they select only one thousand sample points on the surface. So they don't update the pose, uh, but instead of 20,000, they use only 1,000 points, and they uh, mm, they solve this equation basically, because uh, these are your boundary points now, the control points. They are fixed there. Uh, I have this, so I have this boundary points uh, or constraints. And I find other points that respect those boundaries. So in their implementation, they call boundaries C, not, not B, but C. It is like constraints. It makes sense. Uh, so first things first, what I get here, I have a better mesh. So compared to this, I have a good remeshing. So this is just one application of this paper with those 1000 points. Since Laplacian matrix uh, enclose this neighborhood information uh, with cotangent weights or uniform weights, you can get better remeshes. But the more related aspect is the deformation. So take this mesh. Okay. Uh, on the left is that mesh and then on the right is the mesh after moving the control points on the head so just like the one I described here for the vertex 105 I move it here so I want to constrain the 105th vertex in that way and doing that I will also uh, respect the connectivity the original Laplace then you get this deformation so now let, let's let's uh, put everything together <clears throat> now it should be more clear with the next slides so so, so far if you have some unclear regions don't worry <clears throat> basically I will solve this system idea is uh, the, I am looking for coordinates x, so it is not the x coordinates but positions. I will call them as x, it's a huge uh, long vector. So there will be some regularization term plus matching term. So it is what uh, we will do. Uh, so making term move handle vertices to the user specified points as close as possible so in this case making term is applied to one and two points uh, I want to move this point to this 3d point as close as possible so it will be done by this term but doing that you also want to preserve the original features like the noses the curvatures etc so preserve the original features in the original shape and you do that with this Laplacian energy. So without the matching term, it is not interesting because if uh, every point, if this term is zero, 
and if you want to preserve the original filters basically you don't update the input at all right it doesn't make any sense uh, without regularization term it is still not okay because then okay you perfectly obey the matching term so I obey this but I don't regularize the rest so I have this shape which is unacceptable now let's do it together to get this compromise so they fight and this is the output so in other words uh, matching term is this it is very trivial vk needs to go to ck because I am looking for the new vertices v the regularization term is where the Laplace thing comes in basically <coughs> I want to reduce the difference between the new differential coordinates and the original ones why because differential coordinates encapsulates original uh, shape properties locally like remember mean curvature times normal direction it is a uh, shape property so I can uh, find the original uh, differential coordinates by this equation right L the same L times the original positions let's call it V0 and this is the current uh, local properties based on Laplacian it will be L times V so I want this to be very close to the original ones to keep the shape in good shape that is the idea so I can solve this uh, analytically just the way I described in this slide okay or now I will also show it I will also uh, minimize it in least in the least square sense as I will do in the next slides but before that why is this analytical solution valid so I gave you the intuition in the previous slide but let's get into detail a little bit more uh, derivation of the analytical solution this solution is based on this idea so let's take another least squares another nonlinear uh, energy function it is similar to this not exactly this but it doesn't matter I am giving the idea here so this uh, function can be written in matrix form like this so I am looking for V prime the vertices that minimizes this function some matching term plus some regularization term so this regularization term is if you wonder what it is doing is take an edge with i and k v i v k i have the original vector from v i to v k so original edge and i have the new edge which is v i prime to v k prime so i want these two vectors to be very close so then i have a nice regularization right it means that if it, in the original mesh all the edges are like this this length and in after the deformation I try to use an edge like this it is forbidden because this vector is very different than this vector so how can I write this in matrix form uh, so uh, I will write it for the x coordinates only and you will also need to do it for y and z in the same fashion so remember this is the function so what is going on here this is the a matrix so it is it looks like our l tilde matrix right the idea is i will so first edge goes from uh, i don't know v0 to v5 probably so i will call put some one and zero zero weights so this will take v0 and this will take minus v5 so this part is handled it is going to be subtracted from the <coughs> from the zero edges uh, from the zero the vector of the zero a0 so that will be subtracted from the first 
row of this B matrix. So this is handled. B part is here. How about the constraint part? So this is like adding the constraints in the bottom of the Laplace in L matrix. Uh, so what is happening here? W times V I prime. Okay, so W times V I prime. So in this case, uh, let's the fourth vex, uh, vertex to be constrained V4. So W times V4. Okay, so uh, this will be the fourth column. This will be the fourth row. It so W times V4 will get. So I will have W times V4. Uh, V4 needs to go to the coordinate. W times C4, whatever it is. So in this case, it is this. Uh, so let, let me write it clearly. So if I want V4 prime to be close to C, so, so this is the first constraint, constraint, right? So let's use C0 prime. So this is handling that. W times V4, there is also a W in the outside, so you can forget about it, just use one if you don't like W. So W4 minus C0 should be encoded in the function, and it, it is, yes, so I have exactly, I transformed this equation into A times V prime minus B. And I want to minimize it, so I want to set this to zero. And then this uh, identity comes in because this is not square, just multiply both sides by a transpose, and then in the next step, multiply the left hand side by the inverse of this. So what happens is b prime is equal to that thing inversed. And the rest. Let's think. Okay, so this is the analytical solution. Let me do the same with a least square minimization. So reminder, I am doing the following. I am looking for vertex points V that are very close to the constraint points. It is given to you by the mouse directs or whatever, uh, or by some other things. You, in this case, I am constraining all the points. Okay, so probably you are not using a mouse direct because mouse constraints only some points. But anyway, uh, I am constraining all the points. This is the making term, and when I am doing so, I will also obey, respect the original uh, local features, which is encoded by delta zero, which can be computed by L times V zero. Mm, okay, so let's open this. Uh, I will take derivatives, so I don't like this uh, square on the, the top, so I will convert this into this, so remember, uh, just a little algebra, uh, nostalgia, the squared length of any vector is what? It is the uh, first component squared plus second component squared, etc., right? And a2 squared plus a3 squared etc. So I can write this as a transpose times a. This is a very useful identity for our purposes because a transpose will put will be a horizontal row vector. So it will be this a1 a2 and it will hit the original a which is this a1 and a2 a2 so let's do the matrix multiplication a1 square which is this plus a2 square which is this so instead of this I am just going to write this word the same idea I will do it here that square I get rid of it by this transpose tactic now let's distribute uh, let's expand this vt times v minus vt times c minus ct times v plus ct times c 
plus the same thing so this is a vector because l is n by n okay l is n by n and v is all the vertices so this is going to be v so let me write it here all the vertices if i have 100 vertices then i have 100 rows here and now i will focus on only the x coordinates so this is the x coordinate of v0 first row this is the x coordinate of v1 and in the end this is the x coordinate of v99 99 so laplacian matrix n by n multiplied by this column vector n by 1 I will end up with another column vector here and so, uh, so this is a column vector let's just keep it as a vector okay then and let's just keep them all together by this parenthesis it will be useful later so what is happening here lvt hits this thing as a package then lvt hits this thing as a package so all the two hmm, terms are one package lv0t lv and lv0t times lv0 by the way v0 is the so v is the deforming coordinates that i am looking for variable and v0 is fixed this is the response it is the original coordinates like the good coordinates so let's do more algebra so i claim that this and this are the same again i can verify it easily so at times b is so if this is your a at like this two time two and five i don't know so this is at b is same every vector every position is a column vector so b is i don't know 10 and 3 so at times b is what 2 times 10 plus 5 times 3 so 15 times 15 plus 20 35 uh, so this is atb i can also write it as bta so what is bt b transpose it will be 10 and 3 it is now horizontal and a is the original like 2 5 so let me quickly do that calculation 10 times 2 plus 3 times 5 again same result so they are all identical i will keep the first one and get rid of this i have two of this plus this uh, here what i did is i just opened this another identity you need to know a b a times b transpose is equal to b t a t so a very useful identity this is equal to b transpose times a transpose so with that in mind i can rewrite this like this it is fixed so the same thing is happening here this is a t times b this is b t times a they are the same so i will keep two of this first i skip this uh, and i open this further using this identity okay so v t l t and this is the same as above and plus uh, this thing i open this but i won't need this so now this is a function in v and i want to minimize uh, this function by picking the correct v so how do i do it take the derivative of this function with respect to v so this is like v squared it becomes 2v v goes away 2c there is no v at all go this part alpha time first v goes second is here alpha lt and v minus this v term goes 2 lt and v0 is equal to zero so this is something we write set the derivative to zero so then let's just leave v alone i have one v and one since this is a vector not a scalar i need the 
vector of or matrix version of one which is identity matrix so one times v plus alpha ltm times v is equal to c plus this thing ltl v0 response so this is a uh, axb system right a times x is equal to b and i can solve x using a inverse times b it's a sparse linear system again use eigen library probably use Cholesky factorization so this will do this will give you the x coordinates then do the same for the y coordinates then do the same for the z coordinates then you have your uh, then you have your guy uh, deformed so then you have this and then you have this because I just minimized this function okay. now in this version it is slightly unrealistic uh, all points are constrained normally I constrain only some points because in this case for instance I constrain only two points actually because mouse directs this thing and this thing so same idea this part is exactly the same because same regularization but the matching term it will be effective only for the constraint vertices so how do I get this in my world I will use this W matrix so in this case again do it for the x coordinates only so assume that v1 and v4 are constrained so on the diagonals I have the first and fourth the second and the fifth entry one so I will take them in my life and all others are zero and off diagonals are also zero because it's a diagonal matrix so what this does is uh, it will select only uh, so for instance when v0 which is not constrained minus something it is not important so v0 minus something it will hit the first line in the w so it will be zero it will not affect the original e the overall e but v1 when i am talking about v1 minus c1 c1 is some constraint so this thing will be <coughs> hit by the second row so it will uh, be brought to my equation so I will show this in detail uh, later with a real world application but this is the general idea use a W matrix, diagonal matrix where the constraint uh, positions have ones so now let's do uh, more examples here this is the original shape v0 okay press pause and the regularization weight decreases so the user is dragging the mouse like this so there is no regularization here at all okay because i don't respect the original features and i increase it as i go right again no regularization now some regularization and matching term is respected you can all do this editing or reposing or deformation using the thing that I just described and uh, I'm implementing this stuff on a very weird outputs can pop up don't worry you will solve them but there is a theoretical problem uh, you don't support large deformations with that tactic because because of the following uh, remember this is the Laplacian coordinate or delta coordinate it is for vi it is a vector from the center of your neighbors to yourself so when you enforce this regularization term so you, when you want to keep the original deltas okay because the current deltas will look like the original deltas so you want to emphasize you want to enforce this delta but in this deformation you really want to rotate it like 90 degrees but you still want to force this uh, thing so you are kind of forbidding large deformations penalizing them and that penalization 
the penalty will lead to some artifacts so in this octopus arm if you like bend it 90 degrees you have this undesired uh, output with the Laplacian framework I described uh, and there are good alternatives like rotation in accordance or as rigid as possible the formation that I will talk about later there's also a physical based formation uh, concept which is based on F equal to MA uh, uh, law uh, so what you do is you based on the forces like gravity and etc you find acceleration acceleration gives you the change in velocity with that change you get the new velocity with the new velocity you get the change in uh, the position and with that change in position you apply to the current position and you get to the next position uh, so this is a physical base. I will not get into the details of this, but it is very simple and very logical. So let's just do the code of this a little bit. Initially, position is zero, and I the delta t, like my time step, is very small. I have a current velocity, uh, and v times dt gives me the displacement. I added in the new then next I update my velocity based on the forces and with a new velocity I get a new uh, displacement and I get a new coordinate etc so there are better more sophisticated integrators like uh, Runge Kutta etc again I, I need to skip them too and I will also add some I can also add some damping which is a force opposite to the velocity to reduce oscillations okay so they are not immediately related now uh, so let's uh, improve this Laplacian business uh, basically what I do is, is the deformation energy I am talking about the regularization term from a different aspect uh, it is a scalar that quantifies the amount of deformation so how much energy you need to ap ap apply to get this response to this pose or this response to this pose or this response to this pose so when you minimize this energy you will stick with the, you will go to the original shape okay uh, so let's talk about we have already talked about the good regularization energy like the Laplacian but what about an even simpler one so in this case I will measure the difference from the initial absolute coordinates not the delta coordinates not the absolute coordinates so this is not very useful you can say it for fantasy purposes but it will be a good warm up and also I will change my framework here a little bit remember before I was doing everything for the x positions first so I have this long column vector with x positions like v0x v1x v2x all the x corners but now I will go so this vector will end by 1 and I will solve the linear system 3 times for the x coordinate then y then z in this setting I will just keep them all together so I will use a 3n by 1 column vector it will look like this for the first vector v0 first vertex v0 I have x coordinate then y coordinate be careful in the same vector then z coordinate v0 z then the next vertex v1x and then v1y v1z so in the end this column vector will be 3n by v by 1 okay so according to my Laplacian matrix will also uh, expand but uh, with the chronicle product etc I will talk about them but the advantage is I will solve only one system mm. so let's do the matching as usual x minus c 
and for the regularization I only want to minimize the difference of the current x from the original x again this was before delta 0 original delta 0 that I can compute with L times response coordinates x0 so it is a very simple arithmetic just the one I showed you before transpose tactic etc etc so you end up with this sparse linear system so basically if you interpret this I have response here and I have the constraint pose here basically you are going to make a interpolation with that regularization term because if you put this output which is what alpha plus one time x x right alpha plus one times x is equal to that so let's leave x alone basically it's a linear interpolation from x0 to c and as I showed you before linear interpolation can be bad uh, because the shapes are not linear okay now let's improve this a little bit uh, what I will not improve the regularization part sorry so I will do something about the constraint so far uh, we have all the xi goes to ci because I am subtracting x minus c so they need to be compatible column by row by row sometimes it's not the case sometimes I have fewer vertices uh, so I want to uh, register green to gray they are from different applications so I may want x1 to correspond to c7 okay so how do I do it enable xi to cj correspondences so I will show you some uh, algebra trick here I will use a permutation matrix so assume that x0 wants to go to c2 and x1 wants to go to c0 okay so not x0 c0 and x1 c1 okay x1 wants to go to c0 so you build this p prime matrix uh, where the correspondences are marked with one so x0 c2 and x1 c0 now I expand this using Kronecker, extend this using Kronecker product. So it is basically it takes every entry and block multiplies it with that thing. So in this case I will use just identity. So this part will be hit by this 3 by 3, it will be 0. But this part when I apply this multiplication to this uh, scalar block multiplication, I put this block here. Right? This is the idea. So what just happened here, instead of using x minus c, which sucks basically because then x0 minus c0 will happen, I will use x minus pc. So what just happened, this pc, so I want x0 to be interact with c2, right? So let's see, this is the p, so all the points here and I have this chronic extension because I want to be able to select three elements namely x, y, z coordinates of the corresponding point from the C matrix C vector so uh, C0 stuff is skipped thanks to these guys C1 stuff is skipped thanks to these guys and now I will take C2.x thanks to this and I don't take the y and z coordinates, which is okay because uh, remember in my x, so this is the x, I, in the first row I deal with the x coordinate only. So that's why I will take only the x coordinate. In the second row I am still dealing with x0, but now I am dealing with the y coordinate. So I need to get the y coordinate of this constraint. So let's see if it does it. Second row, again skip C0, skip C1, skip X of C2, and don't skip Y of C2. So then X0Y minus C2Y happens. Okay, so a nice application of chronicle product.
so with that in mind I can now uh, so this is uh, I am improving my framework as you notice I have done this now so but there is the problem all the input points here are constraint x0 is constraint and x1 is constraint but in general I don't want all of them to be constraint uh, because in this case for instance I'm making this flashbacks all the time but in this case I want only this point to be constrained and this point to be constrained I don't want this point to be constrained so remember I talked about this W matrix before so let me be perfectly clear about it now so PC does the XI CJ thing we discussed this so W matrix is that uh, so only x1 is constraint okay not x0 so x1 and c0 so what i do is again this is like chronicle product idea i have three components so three elements for one point i will so x0 okay i am doing this x0 minus some position it doesn't matter times zero okay so it will not make any effect to my matching term. Similarly, x0 y coordinate will be hit by 0, x0 z coordinate will be hit by 0. And now x1, which is supposed to be constrained, x1 minus some constraint, like constraint 0, will be multiplied by this coordinate 1. So keep that in my life. Okay. it will be constraint so with this logic I include x1 but not x0 okay so we are completing our framework uh, now I am moving to the better deformation energy instead of x minus absolute coordinates that I did in the previous four or five slides I will do x sorry not x i will do original delta coordinates minus original delta coordinates so in, let me repeat instead of doing deformed position x minus original absolute position i will do deformed delta coordinates minus original delta coordinates for the shape features so we did this so i will not do it again i am just showing you okay what is the difference if you ask from the slide uh, 59 is that there i used l and i did x y z separately here i will do this chronicle tactic and i will put everything into one vector x uh, or yes i call it x for some bad reason because x is also coordinate name but in this huge vector i will have this x zero x then x0 y etc x0 z x1 y x1 x x1 y x1 z x2 x x2 y x2 z etc uh, yeah so that is that also in that slide i didn't have this p support for x for this thing okay so this is the improved version uh, and uh, but this version constrains all the points all the x's as I discussed previously I can do the W tactic to constrain some vertices again I did this before uh, in slide 60 but here it is done in one shot for all the coordinates in slide 60 I did it for X and Y and Z separately. Uh, also, I explained W business better here. So, it is that. Other energies, so I am about to finish. Uh, so, what is this doing is uh, regularization energy. So, instead of doing delta, deformed delta minus the original delta zero, which boils down to L times v current coordinates minus l the same l times 
rest pause coordinates rv0 so instead of this i will use the following mm. uh, displacement of two connected points so nl means two connected points vi weekly uh, should be small especially when the length of the edge is small so two points are close together so denominator is very small then if I keep a very high displacement difference then I will increase my penalty okay so I don't allow it I want displacement of I and displacement of K to be very close especially when they are the positions are very close so you can minimize this uh, so using Gauss Newton method uh, it is different than this derivative based minimization that I have done in great detail I remember derivatives we do this transpose etc so it can still be minimized now let me finish with the state of the art actually this is the most famous and most accurate deformation in reality it is it beats the hell out of uh, delta minus delta zero tactic the Laplace deformation it has a nice idea so you have this element tetrahedron or triangle whatever it goes to the deformed position and you want to minimize the deviation of tetrahedron's deformation gradient from the rotation closest rotation because rotation is a rigid activity so this triangle can be so this is a good deformation it is not shrinking right so the uh, it deforms here uh, so this point uh, how this point is this this point is this and this point is this so this deformation is close to a rotation then keep it it is the idea uh, so you can minimize this energy by explicitly driving this deformation gradient but I will do it in a different way okay so I will not uh, compose this deformation gradient matrix I will do it with an alternating optimization as they do in the original Arab paper by Sorkin and Alexa I guess 2007 uh, uh, so the idea is the following I have the response it has triangles so this is the shape it has many many tetrahedron making up this shape okay let's go over tetrahedron it doesn't matter you have this so user drags the top face like here and then you apply a simple uh, deformation energy like Laplacian or Delta tactic so you end up with this initial yes now the problem is the following you for a tetrahedron here and the corresponding tetrahedron here you find the closest rotation that moves these four points to these four points you can do it with SVD single value decomposition then for every tetrahedron you have four edges or something you rotate those edges from the rest pose using that fixed rotation and compute the other posi the po positions by respecting to that rigid motion so I will illustrate this better like this so same thing first uh, find optimal rotations for a given set of positions okay so I think it is clear so this is this position this is this position I can find the optimal rotation for one tetrahedron you can do it for all the tetrahedra so RT is fixed then find positions V that minimizes this equation so where the hell is this coming from basically you want new positions new edges okay this is an edge IK to be very close to the rotated version of the original rest pose edge so why is this useful assume your mesh is this a disconnected mesh 
assume this wants to go here this wants to go here so this is your guess you find the optimal rotation you can compute it with SVD basically I will talk about that in great detail when I am talking about the shape registration topic next week or so so I will drive this but for now believe me that you can compute the optimal rotation that moves this these three points to these corresponding three points so this is the rotated version this is the rotated version then since these points are disjoint you are done basically this function is useless because you are already happy but it will be clear in a re real mesh so this triangle moves here this triangle moves here so notice that I duplicate this edge for your convenience so what if I keep this rotated uh, edge then since this is basically a copy of this so this triangle will look like this so it then I completely ruin the uh, I completely ruin the uh, first rotation the R2 so the second rotation so on battery So better problem we are dealing with here. Okay. So similarly, if I keep uh, on the other end, if I keep this edge and not this one, then it is okay for this rotation. So this triangle is completely preserved, just like the way I want. But this triangle is ruined. So R1 is ruined. So what you do is this energy minimization. Basically, this was we I weekly go here, and this rotation was we I weekly go here. So you go over to all the we I weekly possibilities, and you want to respect those rigid motions for all the edges separately, overly, and you do this some different some overall. So in that you have a compromise, so you end up with this result, which respects this triangle and also this triangle. So that is the idea. So with the idea in our head, uh, we can now see some more example examples. Uh, here, uh, let's take the one tetrahedron or triangle. Let's go with tetrahedron here. Uh, and we know that it maps down to this deformed pose. So this is the initial guess uh, given by the Laplacian framework or something. Uh, so we find the optimal rotation that moves this tetrahedron from here to here. Then we apply that rotation to that rest pose tetrahedron. We come up uh, at a configuration and then we minimize our energy function EV. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, and actually, I, I let me let me show this process clearly with a two D example I've, which I found recently on Agerman's uh, presentation. Uh, I liked it a lot, and I will now give it to you with my own comments. If this is your input mesh, which is also known as the rest pose, uh, notice that the left and right are fixed, and the user moves the middle uh, by dragging the mouse or something. Uh, and the other triangles elements move accordingly using Laplacian framework for instance which is based on this delta minus delta zero idea that we have discussed uh, in detail in today's class so now comes the cool part so I find I fix these positions and I find the optimal rotation so take this triangle for instance given it's three points and the corresponding three points here it is not a perfect rotation but it is a there is an optimal rotation that brings these two these triplets of points as close as possible it is going to be discussed in our in my shape registration uh, class next week so currently don't worry about it but there is a fast solution to that optimal rotational uh, computation problem uh, okay, 
let's not uh, lose focus so from the response triangle to the deformed triangle I find the optimal rotation and I apply that rotation I end up with this so this is the rotated version of this triangle so it is perfectly rigid uh, but then I do it not only for this triangle I also do it for this triangle okay and it needs it wants to go here so notice that there is a duplication here for your visual convenience this edge wants to go here due to this triangle and wants to go here due to this triangle the same edge be careful so what you need to do is to minimize this function ev that we have discussed here uh, so that rotated edge from one triangle and from another triangle all of them needs to be respected so I will respect them overly so f first coming from that triangle I showed second in that example I have shown you two possibilities but there may be more uh, yeah so that is that you minimize EV to relocate your vertices based on that uh, rotated response edges that is the idea so from here you come here now let me do one more iteration for that response triangle uh, I think I have used this one I want to come here so here is the optimal rotation from this triangle okay from this triangle but, uh, from this triangle to this triangle I can find it and apparently this is that uh, rotation and all the rotated triangles and hence rotated edges they will be uh, uh, they are shown here and when you minimize EV that deals with all the rotated edges uh, you end up with overall nice positions that uh, try <coughs> to respect all those rotations and it is a super fast activity actually uh, five or six iterations are usually enough you can stop automatically uh, by checking the displacement between two consecutive iterations and if that displacement is sufficiently low just stop SVD part for the rotation computation is very fast uh, I also recommend this link uh, I am using that in my own activities it's a good and optimal uh, implementation and EV can be minimized by solving a sparse uh, Laplacian system that is shown in the equation 9 of the original paper titled as rigid as possible surface modeling so equation 9 again I emphasize that uh, so basically you have this Laplacian matrix which is built once because connectivity doesn't change in the uh, upcoming iterations obviously so it will be built once and factored once that's why it is also fast and uh, in some uh, consequently we are dealing with a very fast uh, application here uh, and uh, I have also implemented my own using this tactic I have used tetrahedron tetrahedral mesh here so I went through the edges through tets but again you can also do it for triangles and the logic is the same uh, and I can also quickly uh, show that actually if I can get rid of this uh, my interruption yeah so uh, so what is being done here is uh, I have in this case two constraints one is this point I am not fast enough so it is fixed constraint but this is also constraint but the position of the constraint uh, locations are based on the mouse locations okay so uh, now I change the order I guess so now clear handles reselect them so three handles are selected and the one I am using with mouse and the others automatically become the fixed handles okay uh, yeah so it goes like that maybe we should 
speed things up a little bit uh, yeah, so it is real time obviously interactive uh, so this is something is happening here so I am not applying any forces so wait until the formation energy converges so it is if you don't apply anything it's uh, the formation energy becomes minimum at the rest pose so the other parts are trying to go to the rest pose which is the A pose I guess yeah so um, that's it actually uh, as usual I finish with a potential with a set of potential topic candidates for you um, yeah mm, thanks